All right, so as we were talking before, we're going to go through techniques of jumping back and jumping through. So the first point of attention in the jump back is it's important that you cross the legs and that the knees come high into the chest. So this is really important that you have this connection of knees into the chest so your feet are able to clear when you jump back. Also, depending on the person or how long the legs are, you can cross at the ankles or more at the shin bones. So sometimes crossing at the shin bones gives practitioners more space to clear their feet. So I usually cross at the ankles. That gives me enough because I get my knees up rather high. Um, one exercise that you can do is just extend your arms and try to really pull the knees into the chest and hold. That's, um, that will give you the technique and the, the uh, core activation to be able to hold when you actually do the jump back. So for some that can be rather challenging um, and it's a great exercise to just feel how much it takes to keep and maintain this position. The other thing that you can do as well is try to maintain this cross-legged position with the knees high up on the chest and then bringing the hands down into the floor, forward from your hips, and just lifting up, maintaining the knees into the chest. That again takes a lot of strength for the core, and that's something that you can practice just to build strength. Um, what happens often is we might start off really good, we'll have the knees in the chest, we'll be crossed at the ankles, but then when we lift, the knees go like that. So what happens is it doesn't give us very much space to clear, to jump back. So just practicing knees into the chest and lifting and holding like that is a good strength builder to prepare yourself to then be able to jump back. The other thing that's really important from my experience is when you lift off, so again, covering all the points here, knees into the chest, um, bringing the hands forward from your hips. You, you want to start with the shoulders back, so there's gonna be a little bit of a rocking motion, so there's some momentum happening. So you wouldn't want to lift off from here. So what happens is, is you'll lean back a little bit to get a little bit of this momentum happening, so the energy starts to move forward and up. But to, fil to facilitate that forward and up motion, you want to lift the chest and lift your chin slightly. So it's very common that I'll see um, practitioners lift up, but then they'll droop the head down. So this can make the action quite heavy. So it's important with the inhale, as you press the hands down into the floor, maintaining the knees into the chest, that you lift your chest up and lift your head up slightly, okay? So I'll go ahead and demonstrate go covering all of those points. So crossing at the ankles, knees in the chest, inhaling, lifting my head and chest up, exhale, jumping back, okay? And I'll go into my up dog and then downward facing dog. Can we see that again? Because yeah. it's so clean. The jump back? Yeah. Okay. Do you change where you're looking at any particular phase of the taking your body through? Do you change? You can look at Carol. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you change where you're looking um, at any stage while you're actually jumping through? Do you, or, or are you still keeping tall and looking ahead? So, on the inhale, I'll lift my chin slightly, I'll lift the chest slightly. And I'll try to maintain that lift of my chin. So obviously when I 
when I jump back, I have to throw my chest forward, but I try to keep the chin lifted. That makes the action more light. It makes it more buoyant. Instead of dropping the head and letting everything kind of dump down toward the ground. The other thing that happens is, is when you, it's like you're spotting something. So you're lifting everything up and then essentially you have more space to kind of throw the chest forward. Okay. So this momentum of slightly leaning back and then as I move the shoulders over the hands, I lift up, head and chest up, keep maintaining that position, keeping my head lifted like so. Cool, so you kept looking forward. That yes. Mm. And then we jump back. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I should maybe jump Good. straight legs, just bent legs. Uh, bent legs. Bent legs, know. yeah. Okay. Is it harder, is the bent legs harder than jumping through with straight legs or vice versa? Do you think, or is it just a flexibility thing? Um, it has a little to do with flexibility, but I feel like when you jump through with bent knees, it uh, activates your core more. It strengthens the core. So there was a time I used to do a lot of jumping through with straight legs, um, but then I changed to bent legs and I feel like it, it strengthened my core. Yeah. So, um, okay, so with jumping through, it's really important, the setup is very important to be able to get a little bit of height to then clear and get through without touching the floor. So what will be important here is to start in a downward facing dog with the fingers spread wide. And the placement of the pelvis is important because essentially what we want to do is, <laughs> essentially what we want to do is we want the pelvis to ride over the shoulders so we can then float through. So, um, and what happens is the pelvis will ride over the shoulders and then we want the shoulders to ride over the hands. So from our downward facing dog position, lifting the heels up high and then pressing the rib cage toward the thighs as I look forward in between the hands. So when I jump, my my pelvis is in the position to ride over my shoulders. What's very common is in this position is, is many practitioners will set everything correctly, but as soon as they jump, they'll curl the tailbone under, and then when they jump through, the pelvis is rather low. So thinking or feeling as if you're rib cage is pressing against the thighs, so it may or may not press against the thighs, but feeling as if you're doing that action is really important. So then your pelvis can ride over the shoulders and then keeping the head lifted to clear the shoulders. So you don't want to be here or you don't want to be here. You want your head to be lifted out of the shoulders. So from this position, inhaling, jumping, like so. So this action of keeping the pelvis lifted over the shoulders is very important to have some height. The other thing is that's really important for a nice fluid jump through is to maintain your connection to your hands. So one thing that's very common is when we jump through, we come and then we just lift our hands off like so. Or we also want to swing our bottom all the way through our hands because we think somehow that's gonna like make it seem more fluid. But in actuality, the bottom will always stay behind the arms. So if I were to demonstrate again, pressing my, knee, my rib cage toward the thighs, looking between the hands, inhaling, jumping staying really firmly connected through the hands, but you'll see that the bottom stays behind. So usually students like to launch themselves through and then they don't have that control or balance when they do the jump through. And I could see from the side, maybe we didn't get that angle, but I could see from the side that your knees when you were in the air were really 
pressed up against your rib cage, and it really mm. reminded me of the lift that you demonstrated at the very beginning for the jump back. Yes. And it, so it looked identical, just the fact that you were upside down and in the air. And so, is that something we need to be thinking about too? Is that going to help us slow the fall down? Yes, most definitely. So, when you when you jump through, it's very important, just like in the jump back, the knees are tight into the chest. Sometimes it's, we don't have the strength fully there to make that contact, but it's something worthwhile to work on too. And it will just actually, like I said before, just even practicing this and just holding like this helps to really activate the core and strengthen the core. So I often tell students they see that the, how important that is, but then it's challenging to hold that position so that's very important to be able to clear and to have control over the body when you jump through. And are you thinking of specific things when it comes to, so you've hopped your hips nice and high, mm. but then for a lot of people that bit of actually controlling it down and through in a nice sort of slow way is like super difficult. It's sort yeah. of the, not a free fall, but once the energy starts coming down, it's like, oh, here we go, you know, and it's going through. Mm. So what are you activating to slow the whole process of coming down? So to slow the process coming down from the jump through, it's really important that you feel grounded. So that you feel this conscious connection and grounding through the hands. And I really feel like when you ground, then you feel the energy to be able to then support this pulling in of the core. I really feel like there's a relationship there. And it's really important to have something to push against to then activate and pull in. And is there a halfway? So say for, for a lot of people, can we see the building blocks that they would work through as far as the the jumping back and the jumping through. Mm -hmm. It's like to start with, people won't go right through, will they? They'll, their feet will get stuck. So we've got yeah. the drawing in of the knees. And then what happens when their feet invariably get stuck on the floor? Right, so the first, what I would teach a, like a, a very new student would be first just hugging the knees in and then doing the best they can to just lift up. So just to get the sense of lifting. So with the chest coming up, with the chin coming up. And that will be even hard sometimes just being able to lift the bottom and the feet. So even if they have to keep the feet down, lifting up. So that was very key for me to learn how to jump back over time was I was doing this upward lift, upward lift. And it became higher and higher and higher. So even in the beginning, if you have to use the feet, that's okay. So lifting up, coming back down, then tucking the feet in, replacing your hands, and then jumping back. So that would be a good place to start for a beginner student, just to get a sense of this upward lift. What happens is, is many beginner students might get into the habit of, they'll come out of a pose, so say like you come out of Janu Shashasana A, and they'll just kind of do this, okay? So right, right away rolling over the knees. So it's important that they inhale, just simply lift up, and then they can replace the hands and jump back. And that will just start the process to get some strength in the lower belly area to then, you know, work their way up through the jump back. The next thing would be, and this is probably the, the least pretty part <laughs> of learning to jump back, is just bringing the knees into the chest and then not replacing the hands, but lifting up and then just trying to lift the tailbone up as much as, as one can, get the shoulders over the fingertips and just staying over the arms and maybe just scooting back and then jumping back. So, you know, many students might work in that way. The feet are down, but just working, um, scooting back it's not so fluid, but it can be quite strengthening if you keep the knees in the chest. The next thing would be lifting up, or the next step would be lifting up and trying to swing. So same thing would apply, knees high into the chest, also heels close to the bottom, and then inhale lifting up, and then trying to get a swing. And sometimes I think it's important to just shoot for the tops of the toes coming into the floor and then from there, 
jumping back. So those three steps, I feel, can really get somebody on the, on the way to then being able to do the full jump back. And are there similar steps for the jump forwards? So we, if you can mm. hop up higher, are there those sort of similar sort of breakdowns? Yes, yeah, so for a beginner jumping through, um, I really think it's, so, it's better to come through with a, a sense of control or integrity instead of just boot scooting through, <laughs> you know, just like I've seen a lot of those where they just kind of bump along. So coming into the downward facing dog and even just setting it up like I had talked about before. So lifting the head, taking the rib cage toward the thighs, but, but stepping one foot, but, and I have the hip foot down, but I have the knees in the chest and then taking the other one, and then from here, coming through. Now that can be hard, even for a beginner, but if they're unable to come through, they can do the same thing, stepping through, and they, may, they might even have to do something like this. But I feel like that contact of getting the knees into the chest really is strengthening. It's quite strengthening for the core. So no matter how, even though it's not a, a fluid movement, just making that action helps to wake up this area to then be able to, in time, and as strength increases, um, also the connection to the breathing becomes stronger, then being able to jump with both feet and crossing will become more accessible. Fantastic. <laughs>